Hey you guys, what I wanted to go over with you today is multiplying decimals by 10, 100, or thousands. Uh, this is the first section of our unit, unit 6.1. And I wanted you to know, and I put them here for you, these are going to be the standards that you are going to be graded on for today's work. So do keep these in mind as you are working um, throughout math. So let's get started. So before we get started, let's go over just a brief review. Uh, the first thing I'm going to ask you is, what is a decimal? If you said something that's similar to a decimal separates the whole number from a part of a whole number, and it's or it's anything to the right of a decimal, which is a part of a whole number or a fraction, you would be correct. Remember, a decimal is just that. A decimal is a part of a whole number. If you had a whole pizza and there were eight pieces of pizza that made up that entire pie, if someone took out two of those pieces, that would be a decimal, a part of the whole pie. Let's take a look at this number. The number I have here is 123 and 45 hundredths. Now let's go through this very quickly as a part of your review. The 123 is my whole number. My decimal is the period. Anything to the right of my decimal shows me a portion, a part of the whole number. The 4 is in the tenths place. Remember, the first place value when working with decimals is always the tenths. The 5 is in the hundredths. So when I would say this number and say it correctly, I would say 123 and 45, then I always end with my last place value, 45 hundredths. 123 and 45 hundredths. Let's go through the last part of our review. Do you guys remember when you were multiplying just regular whole numbers by 10, 100, and 1,000? And you had a problem that looked very similar to this one. You had 123 times 1,000, and you were like, I don't understand if I'm going to be able to do it. And then you remembered the pattern, and you were like, oh, it's easy when you remember the pattern. This is actually a really important skill to remember. Because you're going to be basically doing something very similar to this when multiplying decimals. So if you recall how to do this, all you had to do was take your 123, multiply it by 1. That gives me 123. And then all I did was add my two zeros at the end. And then I move three spaces to my left to put in my comma. And then my answer was 12,300. It was very simple. Just remember the pattern of zeros. However many zeros, I add that to the end. Keep that in mind as we get started with multiplying decimals. I think this chart is extremely helpful and I think it's one that you should definitely copy and put into your notebooks. So it'll always be there to help you because it actually shows you the pattern. It shows you here that if you are multiplying your decimal just by one, that you're not moving the decimal. If you are multiplying it by 10 to the first power, you're gonna move it one place. If it's 10 to the second power, you're gonna move it two places. If it's 10 to the third, you're gonna move it three places. If it was 10 to the fourth, which we're not going to do today, you would move it four places. So there's a pattern that's established. Now you're probably asking yourself, well, wait a second, Mr. Saracini, what is this power that you're talking about? We're going to get to that coming up next. All right, so let's put our pattern to use. Let's take a look at this problem. I have 53 and 7 tenths times 10. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring down my 53 and 7 tenths. <clears throat> Excuse me. And now I want to figure out what power this is for my pattern. Well, I know that 10 is simply 10 to the first power. So how many places am I going to move my decimal point to? My exponent is 1. I'm going to move it one spot. So my answer is going to be 500 
and 37. Do you see what I did there? All I had to do was figure out what my power is. I know that 10 times 1 equals 10. That's how I got 10 to the first power. Or I could simply look at the zero. There's one zero. I know I'm going to move it one spot to the right. But wonder if my problem had another zero. What would I do? Well, let's figure it out. All right, so here I have the same problem. I have 53 and 7 tenths times 100. Well, I know that 100, if I was to figure out my base and exponent for it, it would be 10 to the second power. Why? Because 10 times 10 equals 100. Remember, when you have an exponent, you are not just multiplying your base number by the exponent, you actually have to break it out. The exponent tells you there's another 10. You're multiplying it by another 10. That's why I got 10 times 10 equals 100. I also see that there are two zeros, so I'm gonna move it two places to my right. So I'm gonna write my answer, 53, and then I'm gonna add the seven. I have to move it two spaces. Well, I know my decimal point is here, one, uh-oh, what do I do? It's supposed to go here. All I do is add in a zero. It's okay to add in a zero. If you have to move the decimal point over so many places to the right and there aren't enough numbers, to fill in that blank space, you fill it in with a nothing number or a zero. So my answer is 5,370. So 53 and 7 tenths times 100 is 5,370. I just moved the decimal point over two places. There are two zeros. Move it over two places. Well, let's try it with 1,000. Hmm. So let me see. What would my base number and exponent be for 1,000? Well, if it was 10 to the second for 100, I bet it's going to be 10 to the third to make it a thousand. So 10 to the third equals 10 times 10 times 10. And if I did that correctly, it should equal a thousand. 10 times 10 is 100. Multiply that by another 10. That's right, it's 1000. So I'm going to take a look at my number here. Let's come up with my answer 53 and 7 tenths. There are three zeros, so I'm going to move it three spots. Let's move it. One, two, three. Uh-oh, once again, there aren't enough numbers. Hmm, what do I fill it in with? That's right, I'm going to fill it in with zeros. So my answer, if I do this correctly, is 53,700. So my answer to 53 and 7 tenths times 1,000 is 53,700. And that's how easy it is. Just moving it over that number of places, always moving it to the right. So now it's time for you to show me that you can apply the skill that you just learned. So you're going to go back into Schoology, you're going to open up the math course, and you're going to go to the Unit 6 folder. When you open that up, you're going to go into Assignment 6.1, which is multiplying decimals by 10, 100, or 1,000. You're going to go to Step number 2, or number 2, and you're going to complete the activity sheet. It's called Multiplying Decimals by 10, 100, or 1,000. It even says submit your work here. So when you're done with it and you go back into Schoology, it should be very easy to find. When you are completed with that sheet, if you have time left over, you're going to go right into step number three and you're going to work on IXL skill G.2. As you can see, I just listed it right there for you. 
Good luck. Remember the pattern. Do not rush. Take your time. And remember that you are being graded on three different standards for this assignment. So it would be in your best interest to take your time, check your work, and even double check your work to make sure you're doing it correctly. Good luck.